Cisco Information Services is a leading online research uh, service that we sell to institutions, educational institutions worldwide. We also um, provide books and journals to those uh, educational institutions. These are physical books and journals. So in addition to the electronic uh, research services that we offer, we also offer physical books and, and journals. In addition to that, we sell um, and create products for, uh, for the health mar marketplace worldwide. We have leading products for nurses and physicians. And then lastly, we also serve the corporate and government, government markets worldwide. We're definitely a tech company. When we look at how we're growing and where our revenue is coming from, it's very much in tech-enabled products. We're running a very large worldwide accessed information service every day. Over 5 million people worldwide are using our information service, um, and uh, we have the kind of scale and growth in that, that um, that's powering the company. So uh, when we think about the, the opportunities ahead of us, it's all about our ability to deploy technology and, and technology-enabled products um, you know, to really power our company's growth. We built a, a private cloud and we're also embracing the pu uh, public cloud as well. So we're in a transition right now between uh, a very well established and productive um, uh, application framework that we built um, on our own managed data centers. And so to make that environment more productive, we've invested in pro private cloud technologies like OpenStack. Uh, we're using Platform 9, we're using Avi software load balancers. We have a lot of technology going there. We have um, pretty sophisticated uh, continuous integration and delivery uh, pipelines there. But we're also very much invested in, in AWS and the public cloud. And so we're very, uh, very much using all different forms of the AWS services. We're using Netflix, OSS, um, as well as Spring Boot. Uh, we're doing a lot of work in AWS clouds. So we're right in that, that transition right now between an orderly transition from what we're doing on premises and our private cloud to do, uh, moving more and more of our workloads and services over to public cloud been everything challenging I think invigorating the teams themselves have had the opportunity um, to now learn entirely new technologies and and uh, you know everybody's aware that pub public cloud technologies are so emergent the platforms are becoming so powerful I think everybody in the development teams are, are, are excited to be able to be trained and to um, start deploying and developing ap applications in that environment We've grown, EBSCO Information Services, which has become now, started roots about 30 years ago. So we grew organically through acquisitions for a long time. And about three years ago, we realized that the complexity, the numbers of people, the amount of revenue, the number of products, the different markets we're serving, uh, we were starting to have problems with predictability and just managing this, this thing. And so we recognized that we needed something better, and, and we chose an enterprise agile framework called scaled agile framework. And, uh, and that's been, uh, now we've been deploying that for two years and um, people say that's a five year journey to transition to that, to a, a fully robust and mature implementation of an agile, uh, enterprise agile. And so scaled agile has been excellent for us. It's um, the teams are empowered. The teams are controlling the work. The teams are committing to the work that they take on. Um, it also has provided time for innovation, about 20% of an Agile team's time uh, each quarter, and we plan on qu quarterly cycles, is um, allocated for unstructured experimentation, innovation work, as well as planning work for the upcoming quarter. So um, it's also uh, really emphasized just a social way of working. It's, software development has always been to some extent a team sport, but I would say with skate, SAFE, it's definitely become that. It's teams, you're, we try to create stable teams, people are really getting comfortable working with each other, and then we come together in a, in a group of teams um, and, and then uh, coordinate that, and it takes a whole lot of communication and working together in that. And so um, we're still two years into it, and we have more to go, but I think um, we're, we've already seen quite a bit of the results from it. So it provides the methodology that allows you to do that. It's agile, which a lot of, a lot of the whole industry is quite familiar with and that at a team level. But the question is, we have 550 technologists and a company of 3,500 people, and we're serving thousands and thousands of customers. And so how do, you, how do you scale that? How do you organize the work of that many people? And that's where SAFE comes in. And so 
Um, it organizes uh, agile teams into groups of them and in safe those are called agile release release trains and and there's objectives and feature backlogs for them that the teams pull there is also a portfolio management component of it that allows us to prioritize the work across the company so that we that we can productively uh, make sure that the teams are working on the most important work for the for the company. And so we also do have several locations. We have a location in Durham, about 100 uh, people in development down in Durham, and in Birmingham, Alabama, Kentucky, New Hampshire, and Boulder, Colorado, as well as individuals who work, you know, full-time remote in individual offices around the world. So we're coordinating and collaborating using all different technologies. Um, and quite often, and, and once every three months, we try to get people together face to face, and that's the uh, in safe that's called the program increment planning event. Uh, we have one coming up in July. There'll be hundreds of people here in our offices, all our employees, working on to collaboratively figuring out and aligning and turn, you know all the all the technical planning that goes on to really create uh, meaningful products in the market. And so we bring people together, we work through that, we collaborate, we build relationships, and then over the ensuing three months, we're working on uh, building out all, the, all, those, uh, all those products, all the features. So we have, we actually allocate 20% of developers' time to unstructured kind of innovative time um, out of a 13-week quarter. Uh, you know, it's a few that are between planning and innovation. So that's a really uh, very nice thing for the Agile teams and developers. And there's been all kinds of really cool things that have come out of that from, uh, you know, a Kanban, a system that you can integrate to move tickets on a board through voice activation. We've done a lot, a lot of the innovation people have been playing around a lot with, um, you know, Alexa-based technology, um, basically um, be able to uh, explore that whole technology. We've done some of that with, um, uh, which may find their way into our products where we can, you know, uh, for a mobile physician, let's say, or nurse or any of us, be able to use, use your voice is essentially the way that, you know, be, a, be able to have a conversational interface as opposed to a, a typing and text oriented interface. And that's kind of revolutionary. And so we've had a lot of teams do all kinds of uh, text and, and text to speech kind of interactions to try to build out beginnings of a full conversational UI. Technology-wise, we were part of the Kubernetes, the uh, AWS Kubernetes launch that was announced today. We were part of the private preview on that. We participated in shaping that offering. Um, and that's a technology that we're really uh, excited about using. And Istio, we've been very much experimenting with uh, service mesh technology called Istio. Um, and then other technologies, firstly, um, you know, machine learning, as many companies are doing, we're very much into that. We have petted bytes of data here, and we have amazing amount of scale of usage. You combine that kind of usage data with that kind of content that we uh, manage here, and it's, it's like a perfect situation to be able to, to really apply machine learning uh, to improve search results, to improve our content processing, so many things. So we're very interested in that technology and are doing a lot of work there. And then product-wise, we've, um, we've seeded a whole open source initiative for the library uh, market in which we serve called Folio. And in the library world, uh, there's software that runs libraries, much like an ERP system runs a company. It's a core software running a company. And that's called Libraries uh, Services uh, Platform, LSP. And so we are creating Folio as an open source, the first open source entry in that market. And we've got a tremendous amount of participation. Uh, the last event we held just a month ago had over 200, 200 people and, I don't know, 100 institutions represented from around the world of interest of uh, libraries around the world looking for an open source, source alternative to run their libraries, basically. And so Folio, I would say, is a very unique, exciting opportunity for us um, to be able to return uh, some good to the library market as well as offer commercial services uh, over that offering. So that's a very exciting thing. Analytics, uh, we'll be offering analytic products very shortly. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, we have a lot of content. We also have a lot of customers. And, and usage data. And so our customers are looking to benefit 
as they do collections development in a library and deciding what to buy and all that kind of thing, I think we have uh, a unique ability to be able to add value to that process for them. Um, so those are some of, the, some of the things I think are um, pretty exciting in our future. We're hiring all Agile roles um, from developers, front end, full stack developers, uh, certainly people with AWS skills, but also any, you know, really, uh, we still, you know, we definitely have part of our infrastructure that's running in, um, you know, uh, more typical on-prem technology bases. But then we're also hiring for product owners and uh, scrum masters. We're running, you know, scrum agile um, and everything in between. We also have development manager openings. And I would say um, for people who've joined our company, recently have worked in other agile enterprises they find this refreshing and different where we're we really are trying to hold true to some of those uh principles and the way the way it can work and that includes the agile development managers so here we we, we expect development managers to be coaches supporter supporting mentoring um you know we've looked at things like google project oxygen which i'm sure a lot of folks are familiar with and what makes for a really effective development manager in the aim of towarding a high performing work team and so that's what we expect of our managers too so it's a great place to you know come in learn agile learn the technology stacks that we're using get involved with the cloud um, and then also if you're interested in management to really develop the kind of skills that I think are the, are the way the, um, you know, high performing teams uh, need management to, to um, conduct themselves. We've spent a lot of time on that because we, prior to our SAFE implementation, prior to rolling out SAFE wide, we had managers coming with the, to the role with very different ideas of what a manager should be, and, a, and, and I'm sure that's common throughout the industry. And you know, there's the command control behaviors, all these other behaviors, right? So we've had to really develop curriculum, messaging, all kinds of coaching to make sure that we have managers in the role that are are really conducting themselves in the way we believe the role needs to be done. And so. If you're a developer who's looking for that kind of support and a first time of, of seeing if a manage, management role is right for you, this would be a great place. We've also had people who try that and then decide that, you know what, managing really isn't. It really isn't. And so we totally facilitate moving folks who try that and decide that isn't for them into, uh, into the development roles, the architecture roles that they might have come from. In tech, um, we definitely have people, I mean, we're going through this mega transition right from a lot of you know legacy kind of technologies and, and things like that to this, this cloud base and um, so we've been you know moving people through that transition through training um, you know people who were maybe sysadmins becoming devops engineers and learning how to code they hadn't code really you know lightweight script and now they need to be able to uh, so we've been uh, doing quite a bit of that or manual, some people in manual Q QA who had, you know, interest and aptitude to be able to learn how to do test automation and, and, and such and be SDETs, um, you know, we've done that. And so there's um, just over the past year, there's over 10 people who have transitioned out of those kind of roles into a software development role. Um, EIS is part of EBSCO Industries, and EBSCO Industries is a large family-owned, uh, it's a top 200 privately held company in the country that not many people have heard of, um, and they're headquartered in Birmingham, Alabama, and so the corporate headquarters for EBSCO Industries is in Birmingham, however, EBSCO Information Services, which is the largest of the holding companies within EBSCO Industries. It is headquartered here in Ipswich. And the founder of the online research part of our company is Tim Collins. And he started that, you know, in his home in Topsfield as an undergrad. Um, and he's still, he's our CEO today. And so that, that's kind of the, why we have such roots here in the, in the North Shore, Ipswich, Topsfield area. We've grown. I mean, we've been able to com compete worldwide in, in large part due to the talent that we have available to us here in Massachusetts and the North Shore specifically, since so that's where most of our employees are. Employee, we draw employees from Metro West as far as, me well, in addition to those who are fully remote all the time. Met Boston, we have people coming up from Boston, the whole on the commuter rail line, uh, all the way through Salem and on up, as well as Metro West. Um, Merrimack River Valley, New Hampshire, uh, Maine, et cetera. Um, and that talent pool is amazing here. Massachusetts, 
I've seen stats at Massachusetts educational system, we'd be ranked like ace in the world. We're like top of the country and ace in the world if we were a country. Um, so that speaks a lot to just the quality of, of some of the um, some of the resources and the, and the kind of talent that we need to power our company. And it's been very successful for us. We've been able to grow here uh, as, you know, we've been able to meet our growth needs um, here in Massachusetts and North Shore you know, it's been an advantage for us. Um, there's a lot of companies in Boston, you know, there's a lot of great technology, there's a lot of companies in Boston. And I think we're a little bit different. I mean, we're here in a mill building on the side of the Ipswich River. Um, we're right within a within 100 yards of Ipswich downtown center with all kinds of restaurants. And most of our employees are living uh, with a great quality of life in the in the neighboring communities with fantastic schools and the commute here is either by commuter rail or or not a problem or people are riding their bikes and or walking uh, we have a lot of people who are actually live within walking distance of the company so um, it's been a fantastic place to grow the company and we uh, foresee continuing to do that